Welcome to this short lecture on substitution and income effects. This is one of the tougher topics that we're going to study in our intro microeconomics. So after you finish this video, you'll probably still feel like uh, a few things are unclear. It's going to take it's going to take some time to digest this material. So you might want to watch this again, watch the follow-up video where we try to do a more concrete application, review section 21.4 in the book, uh, and so on. So. Basically, the point of substitution effects and income effects is to help us think through uh, what the consumer wants to do when the price of one of the goods changes. So what I've shown here on the graph is I have good Y, we'll call that yogurt, good X, we'll call that uh, X boxes. We have some budget constraint, this straight line here that I've drawn in, and I've shown that at point A, I'm reaching my, uh, I have my optimal bundle. And, and we can tell it's the optimum because we can see that you know, to the best of my ability, I've drawn in this indifference curve, this curve here, tangent to the budget constraint. So there's no uh, half almond, as you saw in the previous half almond video. If we had a half almond, then we'd be able to use that two-step technique for improving upon A. But because at point A the two curves are tangent, we can't use that technique. We can't improve upon, improve upon A. Um, so now we want to think through what's going to happen to the budget constraint if, uh, let's say, the price of X goes down. So we'll say this is an example where PX decreases. Um, we can start with thinking about the intercepts, right? If we have the two intercept points, we have the whole budget constraint. It's a, it's a straight line. So if the price of X falls, this Y-intercept isn't going to change. P I over PY is our uh, Y-intercept. Neither I or PY change, so that point's going to stay the same. Uh, but the amount of X we can buy is going to increase, so intuitively this intercept should be shifting out. And if we do the calculation I over PX is this intercept, if PX goes down that means I over PX went up. So this uh, intercept is going to shift out. So our new budget constraint will have the same old Y intercept, but a uh, further out X intercept, and it'll still be a straight line. Uh, that doesn't look perfectly straight, I did my best, um, just imagine it straight. And finally, another thing to observe is that you can see how between the original budget constraint and the new budget constraint, the uh, slope has flattened a bit. That makes sense because we know the slope is PX over PY. It's the price ratio. So if PX decreased, the slope is going to flatten. Um, so everything kind of matches up with what we'd expect. So now we want to think about um, I as the consumer now can afford to buy more stuff, right? There's there's a new budget constraint that's a little further out. A is not even on my budget constraint anymore, so A is clearly not my optimal bundle. So how can I figure out my new optimal bundle? What we're gonna do is break that into two steps. The first step is, let's think about how we can spend our money wisely. And then the second step will be, um, if we have some money left over, let's spend that leftover income. So it's a lot like the two steps we saw in the no half almond video. And if you haven't watched that one, I'd pause now, go back and watch that one, and then come back and finish this video. So the first step is going to be, I'm at point A, but at point A, the slope, the MRS, the slope of the indifference curve, doesn't match the new budget constraint. It matches the old budget constraint uh, because X has gotten cheaper. So what I want to do is basically substitute to, to spend my money wisely. I shouldn't be buying as much Y anymore. Um, it makes sense to start substituting some X in place of Y. So I can save some money by moving along this same indifference curve. Uh, right, this one right here, the only one I've drawn in. I move down along that indifference curve to a point like, let's say, B, where I have a... Um, a, a wiser or smarter way of spending my money, right? That That's more in line with my new uh, price ratio. And the way you know when to stop is you keep moving along from A to B until you get to a point where the slope uh, matches the new, the new slope of the budget constraint. So this slope at point B is supposed to match the new budget constraint slope. In terms of, you know, how do you know what that point is, we're not going to be calculating that, so don't worry about it. The important thing when drawing the graph is to show the shift that you're substituting towards X because it has gotten cheaper, and thus that's like a smarter way to spend your money is a little more X and a little less Y. All right, so we've spent our money more wisely. We've substituted towards B. Um, a kind of natural name then for the movement from A to B would be substitution effect. So the movement from A to B is our substitution effect. I'm labeling that down at the bottom. And now you can see we still have money left over, right? 
we don't want to stay at B because then we'd not spend some of our money and we wouldn't be getting as much utility as we potentially could. So the next step is going to be that we're going to jump from B to some point on the budget constraint uh, and spend all of our income. So let's say that that is uh, here at point C. C. So we jump from point B to point C. We spend whatever income is left. Um, and we get to a higher indifference curve, right? Because C is clearly better than B. We have more of both goods. So the movement from B to C, where we spend whatever leftover income there is, is then a natural name for that would be income effect. So we call that the income effect. When you combine these two movements, the total change from the initial A to the final C is called the total effect. So total effect is from A to C. So in theory, you know, we could have just jumped from A to C but we wouldn't have a whole lot of understanding in terms of what was the thought process that got us from A to C. It would just be kind of like a jump, an inexplicable jump from A to C. And what we, what we did in this uh, lecture to summarize is that we said, we'll break down how we're going to re-optimize into two steps. Um, our budget constraint is different because the price of X is lower. Because the price of X is lower, I can spend my money more wisely by substituting X in place of Y. So I move along my original indifference curve, substituting X in place of Y. That moves me from a point like A to a point like B. Now at B, I'm spending my money wisely, but I'm not spending all of my money. So from B, I can jump up to C by spending whatever leftover income there is, and we call that the income effect. So these two steps should seem familiar because they're a lot like the two steps we used in no half almond to get from a suboptimal point to an optimal point. Here we're going from A, which is no longer optimal, to C, the new optimal point, using two steps. Step one, from A to C, the A to B, the substitution effect. Step two, from B to C, the income effect. Um, all of this was very abstract. We didn't put any numbers on this or anything. So what the next video does is does a concrete calculation where we do a substitution effect, calculate how much X changes and how much Y changes, then do the income effect, calculate how much X and Y change, and kind of put all the analysis together. So I hope you continue watching the next video in the playlist. Thank you.